Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the Pacific Coast Highway Road Trip video I did with my dad. If you haven't seen it yet, you can see it up here. But for this video, I just wanted to share seven to eight tips that we use to make the most of our Pacific Coast Highway Road Trip that you can use to make the most of yours. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, be sure to leave those in the comments and let's jump into it. Also, I include the cost information at the end as well. The first thing that seems to confuse people is where Pacific Coast Highway actually runs. Pacific Coast Highway doesn't run from Mexico to Canada along the coast. It's actually only a 655 mile section that begins in Dana Point and ends in Leggett. The rest of the route all the way up to Washington is on Highway 101, which isn't technically part of Pacific Coast Highway. I've done the entire drive with Highway 101 before and it's amazing, especially the Oregon coast. But for this video, we just did seven days on only the Highway 1 portion. Whether you go north to south will probably depend on where you fly into and where you're able to get a rental car from. We did it south to north, but in hindsight, I probably would have done it north to south if I did it again. If you do it this way, the coastal views are on your side the entire time, and since the coastal views are the reason to drive the route, it would be nice to be able to have them on the side that you're driving on. This makes it a lot easier to access the viewpoints in areas like Malibu and Big Sur where there's a lot more traffic and cutting across the lane can be a little difficult. I will say though that on some of the windier sections, if you don't like drop offs it's probably better to go south to north so you can be more inland. The easiest way to access Pacific Coast Highway would be to fly into Los Angeles, San Diego, or San Francisco and then head to the route from there. You can rent a car from LAX or San Diego and head to Dana Point, or from San Francisco, you can drive about three and a half hours north on Highway 101 to the starting point in Leggett. Of course, you could always just do sections of the drive if you want to start and end wherever is the best for you, but if you want to do the entire thing, there are big cities on both ends where you can rent a car from. You can do this route in as few or as many days as you have. I generally wouldn't recommend you do it in less than four, as it's a long drive with lots of windy sections and doing it in less than four days would just cause you to miss a lot of stuff. I wouldn't try to do the entire route myself without seven days, as there's an overwhelming amount of things to see on the route and rushing it or driving in the dark would be a waste of the fantastic adventures and coastal views. Even with seven days, we had to skip a ton of stuff. This is especially true if you want to spend more time in bigger cities like San Francisco or Los Angeles. If you want to do that, you're going to have to book at least an additional day to spend time in those cities. So basically I'm saying just take as much time as you possibly have, but try to plan at least seven days if you can. Expanding on that a little bit more, I did want to touch specifically on the Big Sur section. I highly recommend making this section an entire day, going from Cambria up to Monterey. This is one of the most beautiful coastal areas in all of California or even the country, and the windy two-lane road takes a long time to drive and you don't really want to rush it. Seriously though, some of the most beautiful parts of PCH and some of the top attractions are in this section, and doing it faster than a full day will stop you from being able to experience as much of it as you'll probably like to. If you want to see how I spent an entire day in the Big Sur area, I'll link to a video I made on just Big Sur in the description. You'll see lots of videos that will show you that you can do this faster, but if you have the time, I definitely recommend taking it in Big Sur. Of course, you've probably heard the horror stories of traffic in California, and they're pretty much true. Driving in big cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco can be especially rough during the rush hour time period. Make sure to plan your trip to miss the 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. window heading through either of the cities if you're able to, or else it's gonna be slow going. Also, if you travel in the summer, many beaches, especially in Orange County and Malibu, will have no parking if you get there later in the day, especially if it's a weekend. I recommend just being as flexible as you possibly can with your stops as you may have to skip some of them if you can't find a place to park. And in terms of traffic, basically just in the Los Angeles and San Francisco areas where you're gonna have to worry about it, but definitely worry about it if you're there in rush hour. California is known for its amazing weather, which is generally true in the summertime. You'll often have days full of sun and coastal breeze while you're driving. That being said, the mornings can often be foggy with a marine layer affecting visibility, and San Francisco especially has a lot of fog. As you head north, it gets cooler, so I definitely recommend taking a jacket. Plus, you never know, it could even rain while you're on the drive.
The last thing I wanted to share is the cost information as that's one of the most common questions I get about any of my road trips. Pacific Coast Highway is one of the most expensive road trips in the country as California is a vast tourist state and the prices can be a lot higher here. California gas frequently has some of the most expensive gas prices in the entire country. Here's a breakdown of how much everything cost us and it was around $2,500 for our trip. This didn't include flights or rental cars since we're based in Southern California and didn't have to pay for those. A few additional notes on cost, hotels on the route can be expensive since these are some of the most desirable areas in the state to stay. Also, we stopped at a lot of popular food spots along the way, some of which are expensive. If you skip these, you can easily cut down on food costs. That being said, if you add flights in a one-way rental car, I wouldn't be surprised if it cost another $1,500 or so on top of the budget I have here. If you want more information, including a map of the stops that I used on the route, I made an ebook that you can purchase in the description. Let me know if you have any additional questions and we'll see you on the next video.